If you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's the first Saturday in the month of July, which means it's a brand new mission or brand new challenge over on the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So I'm going to jump straight into my art journal page based on the prompts for July. And remember, if you want to join in, you can find the link on the on the screen right now or a clickable link in the description area below. And I'll join with you again back at the end. So let's take a look at the prompts for July. So the first one is to scrape colour over your page. OK, so let's put that card to one side. I have my sheet from my Mission Inspiration journal. So this is 8 inches by 8 inches. It's 300 GSM, which is a £140 um, watercolour cardstock. So let's put my art journal to one side so I've got plenty of room to work with. So um, now it looks as though my camera keeps zooming in and out of focus. So I'm just going to stop and then just set it onto manual. That way it will stop auto focusing every time I lift up something like a paintbrush. So give me a sec and I'll be right back. That's better. That's going to stay in focus now regardless of how far up or down I have it. So. That would have annoyed me if I hadn't sorted that, so I do apologise for that. Okay, so as we were saying, scrape colour over your page. So, the three suggested colours for this month, yellow ochre, grey and burnt orange. Yellow ochre, I have burning bonfire from indigo blue. Not quite burnt, but I have got a little bit of black that I can add to it, just to darken it down a little bit. And to make the grey, I don't have the elephant. Actually, just wonder burnt orange. I wonder if the cheddar would be any good. Bom, bom, bom. That's more like a burnt orange, isn't it? Let's put that to one side then and use that. I haven't got the elephant, which is the Dina Wakely Grey. So instead, I'm going to mix up some black and buff acrylic paint from Dina Wakely and add the elephant to my shopping list the next time I go shopping. So. Yellow ochre, burnt orange, and grey. So I'm going to start by adding the lightest colour, which is the yellow ochre. So let's move that card to one side. I have a spatula. I could use, <coughs> excuse me, I could also use a um, old banker's card, hotel key card, anything like that to scrape across. And if you don't have any of those, then you could just use a piece of card a bit of scrap card that you have lying around. So there's absolutely no excuse for not being able to scrape the paint. So I'm going to put a little bit on to start off with. And just scrape it down. I haven't gessoed deliberately because I knew I was going to be scraping paint. I like the randomness to build this background up. And if you think you've put too much on, don't worry about it because you can always add a little bit more white. So for example, if you think that block down there <coughs> is too dark, then we can always just scrape over. Let's remove that little leg. Just to add some whiter or lighter highlights. You could wait for it to dry, but I'm doing this while it's wet. And that just adds a nice bit of texture into that background. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more in the middle here. Just 
kind of break it up a bit. Okay, number one, scrape colour over your page. So you can use more than one colour, not a problem. In fact, shall we add some of that burnt orange into the background too? Just a little bit, just to add a little bit of variety, just on where those gaps are. I'm not even cleaning off the spatula. I love the randomness of the pattern. That gives us a nice background to work with. Let's just try and break up some of this down here. That's better. I'm liking that, so I just need to clean off the spatula. I've got some wet wipes Ugh, kicking about. So I'll have a couple of those out. Don't know whether they'll stay wet for long. Excuse the rumbling noise if you can hear that. Ian's working in his workshop below me. Which means he's using his drill or his saw. Okay, so let's get that dried off. And I'll be right back. Okay, so step number two is to glue tea bag or coffee filter fragments. Now I just have some fragments here. These are unused tea bags. So this is just going to add some texture into the background. It will probably, he says, go see-through once we've actually glued uh, or added them on. So I'm going to use um, matte medium. So let's just take those off and grab a brush. And let's put some of that matte medium. Uh, this was supposed to be clear. Having one of those days today. So let's just see if I can get... That's it. That's better. Some of that matte medium and a brush. So let's take one of the tea bags, stick it down. Of course, like tissue paper, it will go completely, well, I say it will go completely transparent. The glue goes right the way through it. Don't think it's going to go completely transparent though, but that's okay. It's good to work with materials you don't normally work with. I think I've only ever done a couple of art journal pages that used tea bag fragments before. too bothered whether that's pulled up. There we go, that's pretty much straightened it out. It's a very very warm day again today so I don't think it's going to take too long for any of this to dry. Have another piece there. Let's see if we can add a bit more glue. That'll do. And then a little bit up there. Just to connect it. There we go. There's actually still a few of those tea leaves in there, look, you can see. I'm 
embedded, but that's fine. So I'll drop that in some water, let's get this dried off, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so those tea bags are now nice and dry in that background. So let's take a look at step number three. So step number three is to add texture with a stencil. Thank you, Mr. Printer. Doing its thing on its own again. <clears throat> so add texture with a stencil. So I'm going to use this one. This is called Cutlery and it's available to purchase on my website now. But with this stencil set, you also get the pieces from here as well. So you'll get a knife, a fork, a spoon, which you can then use as a mask. So I'm going to just drop that stencil down there and then, in fact, let's do it up top here. Grab some modelling paste. This is the very, very thick stuff. The heavy, carvable modelling paste. And let's just, just drag that over. So that's the fork and the spoon. That should do. It. And then I'm going to just add. No, I think I'm going to wait, dry that off before adding anything else down here. Okay, so instead of using that stencil again and going here with the modelling paste. I'm not going to do that because I actually want to do some stenciling with it later on. I think that's enough with the modelling paste. It's very, very warm here in the UK at the moment and the modelling paste is drying very, very quickly um, and everything is drying very, very quickly. So I've had to make sure that I clean off my spatula and the stencil um, almost immediately to stop it from um, drying on there and ruining it completely. So I think I'm going to hold off adding any more texture paste but I will use the stencil with some white paint later. So let's move on to the next step. So now we've got, let's pull that back in, uh, make marks with your fingers. Okay so let's get some of that buff paint, a little paint mat. So this is where I miss my glass mat because I could have just done this on the glass mat and wiped it off. I can't really do that with this one because it's not stayed very clean very long. Okay, so I've got paint on my fingers. So let's start adding in some marks. Don't have to do a lot. Just enough to show that there are marks there. It's cool if you can get your fingerprints because coupled with one of the later steps that's going to look pretty good. There we go. I don't know if you can see, I've got fingerprints coming through there, there, up here. Subtle. When we like subtle. Subtle is good. So let's get my fingers cleaned off. And by the time I've cleaned my fingers, those fingerprints, finger marks, 
on the page should also be dry. So I shall carry on cleaning my fingers and I'll be right back in a second. Okay, clean fingers, dry page. So let's bring in the card and have a look at the next step. So step number five is to add a self-portrait or a photo of yourself. So <clears throat> I'm not very good at drawing my own face. Made up faces, yes, but not one that's recognisable. So photograph wise, I've created a quick collage from, I just literally sat with my phone, took a photo, turned to the left, took another photo, turned to the right, took another photo, blended them all together in my graphics package that I have on my computer and then did a half tone dot effect in black and white. And I kind of like the way that sits. Maybe I should have done it a little bit smaller, but that's fine because what I can do is I've got some scissors. So let's just cut a little bit. Just round my big schnozcumber. That's my nose if you're wondering. And then let's just take that all the way around. And then up to my hair there. And that's going to actually, that might be worthwhile just cutting that bit out. Just to kind of stylize it a little bit. See, if you've got a photograph of yourself and you have a, a scanner or printer, just block it underneath and do a black and white print. Works just as well. Now let's see where am I going here. My shoulder's about there, so just so we can try kind of tie that in with the other side. That should do it. There we go. Just trim that round there. Me likey that. Yeah, I think about there. Maybe just try and round that corner a little bit, just to kind of hide. Yep, like that. Like that a lot. Okay, so I want the matte medium again. So I have printed this on slightly thicker than normal photocopier paper. Um, I think it's about the double, so it's probably about 100. I don't know what the American weight is for photocopier paper or printer paper. Um, in the UK, this is about 100 GSM. So just slightly thicker, but not quite. Not a huge amount thicker, but just enough to give it a little bit of rigidity when we're gluing down. So let's get some of that glue down there and then paint some of that on the back. It's not going to be perfect. It ain't going to be perfect. And I'm hoping it's not drying as soon as I'm putting this stuff on. Okay, so let's get this down. So we're going to do it about there. So it looks as though I'm looking over towards the a knife, fork and spoon. Okay, and for those of you that are wondering, um, this has been printed using my inkjet printer. So I'm often asked uh, by people they're saying you know the ink that you use on the printer is permanent once it's dry yes it is even though it's an inkjet even if you go over the top like I am doing with matte medium you can see that it's not 
running, it's not wicking because it contains a resin. It's my printer is the, I'll put it on the screen for those that are interested, it's the Epson WF2630 and the ink it uses is called the Durabright ink and that's the resin. So once dry it's permanent. Okay that's now dry but before I move on to the next step I want to add a colour wash over my face. So I'm just going to take that yellow ochre, add a small amount just onto my paint mat there and I've got a spritzer bottle. I'm just going to add some water and then just grab a brush and make a real thin wash out of the paint so it's pale and translucent. Pale and uninteresting, a bit like me. And then I'm just going to add that as a wash across the top. And that will help to blend it into the background so that it doesn't pop too much. I don't mind the brush strokes if there are a few left in it. There we go. And then just using a little bit more of that, I'm going to go over the top of the cutlery, just to tint it slightly. Yeah, just helps to blend it a little bit better. What did I do with my kitchen towel? There we go. I haven't got another journal hand to do a mop-up, sorry, because I've had a tidy up. A tidy up. Okay, let's get that dry and I'll be right back. And then we can add step number six. Okay, so step number six is to add illegible journaling or scribbles. I can do that, illegible. So, food ball pen, foodie ball, whatever it's pronounced as. And we can start to add some illegible scribbles and I'm going to start down here just to kind of blend that into the actual drawing there so Then at the top, I'm going to write upside down. illegible. I shall probably come back again and add a little bit of black detailing around the outside, maybe even do some more scribbles, but that food ball pen takes a while to actually dry, so I'm just going to give it a quick hand. Okay, so step number seven 
is to add one word repeated three times. Now I'm going to do this as part of a kind of pseudo sentence. So I've actually printed out a little bit of a saying, a quote or a phrase if you like, um, on my computer including the word food three times. But I've got the word truth in there which is also one of the words for inspiration. So kind of hitting that one there too. So I'm going to grab my clear glue, just add some of this to the back. Now the reason I'm not using the matte medium is because the food ball pen ink is not particularly fast or permanent when it's dry. You can still move it. So I'm just going to use the glue. And my illegible scribbles, by the way, is all about food. Or the lack of food that I'm experiencing at the moment, trying to lose weight. It doesn't matter about going over the top of the illegible writing because you can't read it anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, obviously. So you don't really need to obsess about it. And then I'm going to add the word food three times. There, there. I don't know if it curls over onto there a little bit. That's grabbed quick. That's grabbed really, really quick. I'm going to leave that for one or two seconds to dry and then I'll be right back. Okay so that is pretty much almost dry but what I want to do is I just want to bring in some of those grey accents. Um, I haven't used any of the grey, I've used black but I haven't actually used any of the grey so I've mixed up some of the black and the buff here and I just want to add a few little um, light grey accents just using this Fleur de Lis stencil it's very very subtle build the paint up And then I can add maybe just a little bit more up here and a tad down down there but I need to mix up some more of that paint first. So a lot of buff and not a lot of black. Clean the brush.
should do it. So a little bit more up here. And then just a tiny, tiny amount down there. I'll do. Okay, let's get that dried and cleaned off and then I will be right back. Okay, so the stenciling now is all dry. So we've got the final step to finish with some sparkle, shine or lustre. So, because we buried that burnt orange in the background um, I've dug out some wild honey distress stickles. So this is kind of an orangey colour. Let's just see if I can find the distressing. Oh, there you go. So it's kind of like a, it's supposed to be the same colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of um let's see we've got piece of kitchen roll. That'll do. Squeeze some of that glitter out. Grab a very, very small brush. And then I'm just going to add a little sparkle over the top. I'm not going mad. So, I don't know whether you can pick that up, but it just takes a little bit of that flatness away. If I just take a little bit and just catch. A little bit under there as well. Not a huge fan of these distress stickles. Don't mind some of the glitter glues. But sometimes I just look at these and think well, they don't really work. But as soon as I have a few of them left over from when I had the shop. That'll do. So, what I also wanted to do, just to go around the outside, just add in a little bit of a doodly border. Just to kind of finish it off. Plus it also helps to tie in the black from the photograph and the writing. Just 
kind of random zigzaggy border. There we go. And if you just want to reinforce that, you can always just add more squiggles all the way around. That. You could even outline the knife and fork if you wanted to, but I think I need to leave it to dry to start off with. But I think that is just about it. So, once again, let's just quickly run through to make sure I've used all the colours. So, yellow ochre, grey, burnt orange, all in the background. We've followed all eight steps and we've used the word truth. So, there we go. So I know it's not a pretty, pretty art journal page this month, so it probably won't please the pretty brigade. So I'm about to get a few thumbs down. <laughs> but, but, you know, art journaling's not always about, you know, happiness and light. So at the minute I'm going through this period where, yes, I'm on a diet, so literally all I can think about is food. So this reflects what's going on in my life at the moment. So, forgot to mention, I've stuck the prompts onto the back of my art journal page so I know what month and what I did with those prompts too. So, there you go. Like I said, it's not a pretty page this month, but like I said, they can't all be pretty every month. So, and they have to reflect, you know, your own personality, your own lifestyle and what's going on in your life. That's the whole point of art journaling. It's a personal thing. So, there you go. So, I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, Please give it a thumbs up, not a thumbs down. It's just rude. Share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget, there is a link in the description area below for the Facebook group if you want to join in and have a go yourself, or you can see it on screen now. That's all from me for now. I'll be with you again in the next few days. Bye for now. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.